<laughs> hey, there you are. <laughs> Finally, I, I've I've been able to um catch you at a time where you're not your busy. Um, <laughs> how are you, darling? It's been a second. Mm, that's good to hear. I mean, I don't know. It's it's really cool that you're up there, up there, uh, doing that thing, and you know expanding your horizons and your worldliness, but I definitely do miss you. Uh, you're a little old me waiting for you to come back. <laughs> Thanks for picking up, you know? I definitely feel like even though I've adapted and I've accepted the fact that you're gone and you've been gone and you're going to be gone for a couple more months, I uh, just <laughs> being able to hear your wonderful voice definitely makes the um the wait a little bit more bearable you know i have been doing my best to, to find new experiences and to do new things and to find new things to talk about so whenever we or is it it's a few months right yes okay so when you do come back that we'll have just that many more things to talk about and you know <laughs> And I mean, we don't have to talk per se. I'd totally be down with cuddling too, because I don't know, I feel like having you here every day, it really spoiled me. I don't know. And now that you've been gone for like, what is it? I don't know, like a few months. Man, I really do miss just um, being in your arms, you know? I don't, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad thing. I definitely, and it's not like I'm sad about it. I just, am in hopeful and um not impatient but i'm definitely in anticipation of <laughs> when you come back because i will tackle you in the airport and i will give you a lot of kisses and um you won't be able to escape for like f five minutes maybe more i don't know but um hmm. yes yeah, so how's it been up there No, really? No way. You know, I always sort of imagined that, you know, they do things like that up there, but I don't know. I feel like you can never really tell if a stereotype or something people say is actually true until you have firsthand experience. So I think that's pretty dang nifty, you know? Yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, if you're up there, that's the thing you do, you know? <laughs> yeah. How about um um the food? How's that been? I, I hear it's you know quite good. <laughs> oh stop! Oh, that sounds too good. Oh gosh, I'm man. I am. I am not gonna be happy in the next couple of dinners I have, knowing that you're just that. That wasn't like a special occasion or anything, right? That was just things you normally eat. Wow. Okay, you're lucky. I mean, I know I could have gone too, but, you know, I had, <laughs> I don't know, my classes didn't transfer over, you know, to the abroad program, so I couldn't, but you're definitely going to have to, like, share those experiences with me, and then maybe, like, in the future, after we graduate or something, or maybe, like, in the summer, I don't know, you're definitely going to have to take me up there. We're definitely have to go and try those things because, gosh, that sounds delectable. <laughs> but, um, you know, <sighs> are you sure you're, you're doing okay? I mean, I don't, you don't have to put a face up for me, you know. I know we don't get to talk too much since time zones and whatever, but, you know, you being far away doesn't change the fact that I love you and I care for you and I want what's best for you. And I know, I know you and I know what you're doing and I know you're trying to put up a front to make me happy maybe, I don't know, or to keep me from worrying, but <laughs> darling, that just makes me worry even more, you know? How are you really doing? Are you okay? Oh, 
pun. <laughs> I can definitely see that. You know, I haven't been really that far away from, I don't know, like a support structure like that before. And, you know, just I imagine seeing all the people and, you know, seeing all the new places and doing all the new things is very exciting. But, yeah, I, I, I could definitely see how, you know, especially in a time like this, how you could definitely, you could miss home. You know, I miss you, but I still have all the things that I would have normally at home, so I can only, you know, I can't even imagine what that's like, love. Do you, um, I, I mean, you have the other f friends from your program, right? Um, how are they? Like your, your roommates and stuff, you know, do you hang out? And do you get out much? Mm -hmm. You know, sorry, I'm going to get on my high horse here, and feel free to stop me if you think I'm going on too much, but I'm just going to say a couple of things, okay? One, I think um, that the the parts of life that aren't the greatest really make the parts of life that aren't are great better because if every moment was great and if i cuddled you like forever and always it wouldn't be special anymore you know and it lose its value and i'm not saying that the bad stuff is good necessarily but it definitely does bring a lot more value to the good stuff and i don't know i feel like in going through the bad stuff we learn and grow as a person to make us better appreciate the good stuff when it does come around, you know? Okay. <laughs> Secondly, um, even though you really mess everyone back at home and all the things that you're used to, I really think that it's cool um, that you're out there, you know, meeting new people, seeing new places, doing new things, because I feel like each of us sees like a very limited part of reality very limited because we have our own biases and you know our own thoughts about the world and when we go out and we do new places and we like just stretch our comfort zone i feel like we just learn so much more about the world and are able to better get a picture of what that true reality is i feel like no one ever really reaches that true reality but by meeting as many new people as we can and kind of being receptive to new thoughts and ideas and opinions, I feel like we ourselves grow as a person. And even if we don't really necessarily agree with what these other people have to say, um, it allows us like a training exercise to better understand our own beliefs and, you know, steel hardened steel. And finally, um, I don't know. I feel like hear me out on this one because it's a bit of a stretch but I feel like being away from each other for this long again just kind of like with the um, with the good stuff is only good because there's also bad stuff I feel like we're hanging out a whole lot when we were here together and we definitely will when you come back but I feel like I'll just appreciate you so much more when you return as opposed to, um, you know, because I feel like we're getting a little comfortable and, you know, and hey, you know, if this works out, we have like 19, so like 81 more years of life to... <laughs> Or more, I mean, like, with modern medicine and everything. But, like, come on, dude. This is a small amount of time. And it'll come to pass. You know, that's just how time works, you know? Things go on. And it's really interesting with time dilation. If you're having fun or you're being entertained or you're receiving a lot of stimuli, time seems to move faster since you're processing more things. So, 
you know, we'll just keep on moving, we'll keep on going, and we'll just keep on finding these new things, these new experiences, these new people, and we're going to be okay. And look, you know, I'm not saying that um, you shouldn't be sad or you shouldn't miss me. You know, I think I'd be a little sad if you didn't miss us back at home, but I think it's important to have that in moderation because I know I'm I'm going on I'm really, I just one last thing, but I think sadness is best enjoyed in parts because I've definitely been in that place where I'm just really sad and lonely and I kind of cut everyone else off and I feel like it's this just really vicious cycle that just drives you into further sadness. So know that I am here. I am a text or phone call away if you ever need someone just to talk to or to lean on. But I do urge you to, you know, go and find those people and places and things that make you happy where you are right now to kind of bridge the gap. And when we do finally, you know, come back together, it'll be amazing. But for now, I want you to find those things in the place that you are now that make you happy. Because I think, you know, a situation will never be ideal. But I feel like we have to find those moments and those things in our life that maybe not aren't the best or what we dream of exactly, but are what's readily available to us in our in in our environment. So, yes, thank you for coming to my TED talk. I really hope you're doing okay. But uh, <sighs> you know, there is this one time when I was at the grocery store with my mom. I, I don't know. I think I was like six and <laughs> well what happened so she asked me to pick a cereal or something right and I think she, it had been because we were walking by the cereal aisle but it had been more of like a hey you know think of a cereal or something so that you can pick it when we come back around in my head I thought uh, I'm gonna go to the cereal aisle because I really want to you know pick up those cocoa puffs and I go into the cereal aisle, I pick up the Cocoa Puffs, then I turn around, and I realize my mom isn't there anymore. And gosh darn it, I was scared, and I felt alone and afraid. But you know, I got through it, and eventually <laughs> my mom came back and found me, and you know, and I didn't die, and everything was okay. So... All that to say, I really hope that you're doing well and that you can make the best of where you're at right now. Because, I mean, come on, being up there, that's a dream. We've always talked about it, okay? Like, come on, you're living the dream. I'm not, and I'm not pressuring you in any way. I'm just saying, you know, like, come on, dude. <laughs> but, um, okay, sorry, I think... I feel like I'm repeating myself. This is important stuff, and I love you. And, you know, the next time we call, I want I want you to talk, because I talk way too much. But, uh, okay. Final thing. Uh, I, <laughs> don't laugh. I have been learning Dwarvish, not Dwarvish the language, but Dwarvish runes. And yeah, I think it's like one of the um, the ways they wrote in the the Tolkien Hobbit movies. But I think it'd be really cool if you learned it as well. It's just like a simple substitution alphabet. Like it's not an entirely new alphabet. Like you know, like how the German alphabet has different letters or the Russian alphabet has different letters. But it's like a substitution alphabet for the English alphabet. So you write it as if it were English, but with different characters. And it looks really strange to the untrained eye. And I think, I don't know, I know I'm 12, but I think it'd be really cool when you came back to like,
pass notes or, you know, even maybe write letters in Norvish. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. That is, that is good to hear. I will, um, I will try to write one. My Dwarvish is terrible right now, but we'll figure that out. So, okay. If you've got to go, you've got to go. I'm sure that you've got a lot of stuff to get to, so I love you, and I miss you, and I hope everything works out, and, you know, call or text me. No. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Okay. On three. One, two, three. <laughs> you didn't hang up either. Uh, we're going to be here all day. <laughs> Fine. I love you, darling. Bye-bye.